I'm Matthew Foster, the Chief Data Scientist for Simply AI. So I'm going to take you through a little journey of mine, how I got to this stage and what I'm using H2O for. Um, and any questions throughout, please feel free to ask as we go along. It's very informal. So about myself, um, I swapped the wind and range of London um, to the, the cool breeze of Sydney uh, about 15 years ago. And since that time, I've been working on um, data analytics, real-time um, startups, um, all kind of with the theme of data science, uh, real-time visualizations, and working with businesses in Australia um, and worldwide to um, get the real-time analytics and data sorted out. So during that time, I've been through lots of different technologies and I've evaluated lots of things and it's been a little journey for me. And so this leads me now to the next person or animal. This is um, a five-year-old stallion from France. Now, can anyone guess the name of this horse? Gold Trip. And the Gold Trip was the winner of the Melbourne Cup um, last week, if any of you um, knew that. And what I did was build a machine learning model which predicted the winner. And so out of all of the startups and exits I've done and, and code I've written over the years, I think it's one of my proudest moments to predict the winner of the Melbourne Cup. Um, it was a really good achievement, and, um, and my friends can vouch for this. You know, they all place their bets, and, uh, and we'd, we'd probably spent most of the winnings on, on the day. Do you have a question? How much did you put on it? I had uh, $200, and yeah, did, it paid $21. And <laughs> some, of my, um, some of my colleagues um, play, had the win and the place bet on, on the same horse, so they did much better than me. Um, so it was um, a really interesting one. But the journey to get to this stage um, started many, many years ago. And it was when I first came to Australia, one of my, my first boss actually, he said, Matthew, can you do something to predict the horses? And I said, oh, it's not that easy, right? And so I started off with the rules engine, um, got the data in, it just failed. And I kind of forgot about it for, for several years. And then in 2015, um, I started looking at different solutions for this. And the machine learning started to evolve and we had the, the CPUs on the laptops went from one core to two cores, then to four cores. It started be, to become more interesting. So I looked um, all the way through uh, those years at these different technologies. I looked at um, PyTorch, I looked at TensorFlow, I was looking at the GPU training, um, all good stuff. I looked at um, Spark clusters, and then I stumbled across H2O. And so in my uh, house, I had several laptops there, and I linked them all together with a, with a, in a H2O cluster. And we, I started then preparing, learning, getting the data in and learning the models for the, for the horse racing. But it takes time. And so over the next few years, we're preparing the data. So in a typical horse race, you might have 10, 10 or 12 horses. Each horse, we've ended up with um, a data set. Each horse has around 1,000 features per, per, per race per horse. Um, and it goes down to all these levels, things like the, um, the number of races it's run, the trainer's um, accuracy, the, um, the jockey. There's all sorts of things going in here. And even for horses with no form, we can bring in the form of their parents. So the horse's parents are a great um, indicator. So there's all these tricks, and it's taken years to get to this stage. Um, and eventually this was in production around um, two years ago, and we've been using it since, you know, gradually increasing the bets. And um, it finally... Um, yielded fruition uh, last week in the Melbourne Cup. So I'm really pleased with that. So that's where I studied and learned about H2O. Um, it started as a, as a small bedroom project. And I knew it was working because it was delivering good results. Um, we're getting about 75% place bet accuracy um, on the model, uh, which is um, pretty cool. So then what happened? So my, my, my good friend Darren, who's in the audience, he said, Matthew, what can we apply that horse racing to business? I'm like, okay, sure, let's, let's start something. So Simply AI, um, basically, we've, I, Darren called me over a few years ago to, to set up the AI machine learning division, which is on this slide here. So Simply AI um, is a partner for several businesses. We've got about um, 50, 50, 60 businesses that are using Simply AI's consultants and technology and expertise. Um, we're focused on um, automation, 
So intelligent automation, which is the robotic process automation. So the, all of the um, data, unstructured and structured data, can be processed automatically by a robot, replacing manual effort. Um, those results in savings, um, you know, we're looking at um, 10 million automation jobs so far this year that have been run by companies that are using Simple AI's um, expertise and saving around $8 million of, um, of saved funds. So we've got basically the, um, the groundwork for this. We've got the data architecture experts, the analysis, the development implementation. All of these consultings or consultants that we have basically provide the foundation for machine learning. Without data, there's no machine learning. It's data, data, data. And so we've been partners with HTO for around five years, um, helping companies um, implement this technology. We've also got some other cool stuff going on as well. Uh, we're designing vertical applications for insurance, for business, for government, healthcare. And so instead of just selling general horizontal frameworks, we can actually sell point uh, vertical solutions. So let me just talk a bit about what we've done recently. Um, we helped a big insurance company. Um, they, were tr they were trying to use um, Azure and it's basically failed. Now I've tried all of the different machine learning um, offerings um, from Azure, from Amazon. And you know, Amazon, if you look at the SageMaker, after a few hours looking at it, you're just tearing your hair out. It's, it's slow, it's, it's not well designed. With H2O, you can get something up and running in hours, get the model trained, get the predictions running. So in terms of you know, getting something actually into production, H2O is the simplest way to do it. And I like simple. It's easy, it's reliable, it's robust. And so that's what we've done for this customer. Uh, they've got their first model in production now, um, doing claims predictions, um, probably an es estimate of around 2 million for saving per year. And it could be much higher than that, um, but that's a conservative estimate. And so in terms of uh, the H2O product, um, as I said, it's, it's simple to use, it's easy to learn, and those are the key things for, for getting something in production running reliably. So how did we do it? So this customer used, used Snowflake for their um, central repository. And so what we did was the, the data from Snowflake is basically a lot of engineering going on here. So as with the horses, we have a thousand features per horse. With a, a, a claim, there's many dozens and hundreds of variables that need to be added onto that claim when it comes in. So that's where the pre-processing comes in. So the pre-processing is done in Snowflake. It then the, um, the model is then scored in Snowflake as well. So all of that data then is in Snowflake. So the model from H2O is uploaded into Snowflake, the mojo, and it's stored there. And then the scoring function, it's the UDF function in Snowflake, that's all scored inside Snowflake as well. Then what happens is the results then come out. We have a post-processing um, script which stores the results and so it, it can be analyzed. And that's critical for the, um, for the data drift and for the model um, accuracy um, dashboards. And then eventually the results then go to the internal business application. So, you know, H2O needs this integration. So you have to get the, um, the data into, H into H2O first, get the model back into Snowflake, then the scoring occurs, and then out comes the predictions at the end. Um, so there are challenges with this. Um, you know, one of the challenges with having the scoring function inside Snowflake is that it uses Java internally. So each function call actually starts a Java runtime. So there's some challenges there that we need to look at. Um, the better, better way to do it is what we're moving to next is actually using the MLOps endpoint, and then it can be a faster, a more um, real-time scoring system. But that's, what, that's the way we set this up. Um, we, we, had, we had a limited time to do this, and we, 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 we found the best way to do it was to do it inside Snowflake. So some of the other things that we did uh, with this customer. Um, I always like to, to look at these three foundations, these simplify, automate, and monitor. I love these three things. So simplify, what we did was we looked at the pre-processing code and we found that around 40% of it could be removed. And so if you can take 40% of the code out of something and get the same results, you're gonna have more maintainable solution in the end. Automation, what we did here was we looked at the test cases that were required for the model um, accuracy. And we actually automatically generated the test cases as well as scheduling them. So when the model was going between environments, all of the test cases can be rerun and the results can be then automated onto a dashboard and alerting for, for, the, for the system. And then monitoring as well, which is critical for, for models in production. You have to monitor the performance. Is the data that your model is, is running in production with the same as what it was trained on? 
and that's where we were able to look at the uh, model drift and data drift. And so just the same with the horse racing. If the, if the horse's behavior changes, then it's going to change your results. But what we found with that, and it's with most things, is that once the model is running, you can then get a really good uh, angle on the results. And as long as you're monitoring it every day with, with alerting, um, then you can really get good performance from the, uh, from the system. So the other use case uh, we looked at was with um, NLP, hydrogen torch. And this is a much more complicated use case. Um, you know, the driverless AI is, is great at doing the classification and regression. And to be honest with you, it's much easier than NLP. NLP is difficult. And so what we're trying to do here was we're looking at policy documents. And within the policy documents, um, they had about, um, you know, around 20 to 30 actually labeled. So we, we labeled the uh, paragraphs in that policy manually. And then we started to see, okay, can we use that model to then predict the labels in the other 50,000 policy documents? So these policy documents, each one's different format. There's like, you know, 50,000 of them. They're all completely different. And we used Hydrogen Torch for this. And the model that, it, that you build from this um, can be built in, you know, maybe 10, 20 minutes of training. And then what we did to generate the um, scoring, we have to then take a candidate um, policy document and we generate all possibilities of paragraphs. So from one to say 50 sentence lengths. And then we score those paragraphs against the train model and it's able to then predict where the paragraph is in the document that we're actually wanting to label. And so we're able to then um, look at this and look at the risk of, of each of these 50,000 policies that, we're, that we're, we had and then start looking at the trauma definitions, risk definitions, and it's pulling them out, allowing the user to see what's inside this document. And so what I did was we wrote um, a wave app. Um, and wave apps are useful for you know, the technical side of things. If it was a Power BI dashboard connecting to Snowflake or database, that's fine, it's easy. But for this, it needed that, that complicated backend to actually split out this PDF file into all the different candidates, and then it's doing scoring internally. So this little wave dashboard that you can't probably see well, um, allowed the user to upload a PDF file, and then comes, takes, it takes around you know, maybe 30 to 60 seconds, and it comes back with all of the labels of the paragraphs inside the document. It then stores the results of that, and then the user can then search for a definition they're interested in. It will tell them all of the policy documents that contain that definition. They can also do um, a free text search as well. So, you know, full text search um, is something that I've been doing for a very long time, and we're able to just do a little um, extension of that in the Wave app. So the Wave app itself um, can have a trained uh, full text search library inside, allowing you to do full text search across thousands of documents instantly, all within the Wave app. And then the, the user can then um, click on a policy document and then actually see the PDF file um, that they were, were searching for. So that's basically what we've been doing for the last um, couple of months with this customer. And so in, in terms of um, H2O, you know, we've, I've shown here how we can use it for horse racing. We can do it for claims predictions, look at for policy definition lookups as well. So it's kind of a, a whole range of different uh, use cases. So I just thought it'd be nice to show you some, some of this and get any feedback. So thank you very much. Um, Simply AI, um, if you're interested, uh, we've, we're offering a, a free um, consulting workshop. So any of you that are interested in seeing how we can help enhance your machine learning uh, projects, um, you can contact us on any of those channels below. So thank you very much for your time. And any questions afterwards, come and feel free to come and see me. Thank you. All right, did I use driverless AI with horse racing? Um, it was the H2O Auto ML um, that I used for the horse racing. Because um, the driverless AI has only been around for the last like two, two or three years, is it? Um, so the, I've been doing the horses since like 2015. So it was the Auto ML, which is a very good um, you know, library of, uh, of machine learning. And the, the horse data basically is um, from several sources. Um, some of them you have to pay, you have to pay for this, for this data. Um, some of it's not free, um, but I think you can probably at $40 a month, you can pay for this data. And, um, but then you have to start on the journey of feature engineering. So you take the data from these public sources um, and then you can 
think of how we can add features to it, so engineer the features. Um, and there's something else I, I'm doing at the moment, which is not in the slide deck, is um, I'm applying this to the stock market next. So that's another, that's another fun one to think about. Um, and yeah, getting interesting results, but we're at the start of that journey at the moment. Any other questions? <laughs> I, I call it calculated investment, not gambling. Um, but yeah, life, life's a gamble, hey? All right, thanks, guys. Thank you.